100, 200 meters in the pack. And that kind of changed my racing strategy once he wasn't up front. So I'm sure the big players are going to be keeping their eyes out to make sure everyone they expect to see is up there. But hopefully everyone's able to stay on their feet. And you, I mean, I just love the energy just looking at the start line. And one of the great traditions, Tom, here as we work our way the way all through these boxes here and all those faces, they've got a big test in front of them, but they're also enjoying the moment. I love it. It's, I, I call it the color, the pageantry, the excitement of big time cross country. And there you see Danny Simmons, he's ready. He's got his black gloves on. He's ready to go out there and take on the field. Uh, but I love it. I love the fact that they're not so nervous that they can't play to the camera a little bit. It keeps them relaxed. Well, we hope all of you watching around the country, around the world for that matter, on runnerspace.com, find someone in that field to root for, to cheer for, to congratulate. After this race is over, 204 athletes about to toe the line, both for the individual title, but perhaps most importantly, the Nike Cross Nationals team title. And we're underway at Glendevere Golf Course in Portland. Championship racing in 2023. This is the boys' championship race at 5,000 meters. I'm very curious to see how this unfolds, Paul because with the internet and social media, you kind of know who all the good runners are. So I'm sure people are casting glances left and right. And Sean, as you pointed out, look at that enormous yeah. puddle. I mean, you can already see everyone's trying to navigate. No one really wants to get their spikes absolutely soaked 400 meters into the race. But, you know, it's, it's I wouldn't say it's strung out, but you can tell that, you know, the top individuals, top teams are trying to position themselves early on in the race because the sooner you can get in a good position, like we said earlier, the easier it's going to be. And the race within the race as well for those spectators out of Glendevere getting from position one to position two as they'll have a couple of great spots out on the course to view some of these competitors as the racing gets underway here. And we'll start to identify some of the athletes near the front of the field. Nolan McGinn is figuring prominently there. The NXN champion out of the New York region, Bib 174. We have splits out on the course at every kilometer too, so we'll be able to keep track of leaders as well. Paul, the interview with McGinn last week was very revealing. He said, I learned a lot from running NXN last year and I'm not gonna make the same mistake two years in a row. It's a very, very tough course at Wappingers Falls in New York. So this young man, I would take him very seriously as a contender because he's got the experience and he knows how to run on tough courses see from high above as they'll work their way down one of these main fairways in fact coming around and we'll see what is the ultimate end goal for this race which is the finish line as they're working their way around for this first two minutes of racing out on the course but a fairly solid lead pack of runners here early on indeed and that's josh bell from templeton california a little bit of a surprise that he's up here pushing things a bit uh, but you never know. You know, the excitement, Sean, can, can allow some runners maybe to go out a little bit too fast, maybe a little bit beyond what they're truly capable of. Have you seen that before? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. High school, is, is that is a very classic <laughs> race strategy in high school. Still happens in college. Um, but, yeah, I mean, right now it seems like everyone is content to kind of mostly be in the pack. I mean, we have three that are maybe five meters ahead, but I wouldn't really call that a breakaway. And no one at this point seems to want to make a hard move. But, you know, like we said, when all the talent is coming together, I think especially that first K, you're going to kind of feel out your competition. You're probably feeling out your legs. Obviously, you did the course run through the day before, but now the conditions are a little different. And, you know, there's team strategy at play for some of these top individuals. And, um, you know, this is where we're going to see it probably starts to unfold once we get to a mile. But right now, everyone seems pretty content to run together. You need to add about a second or two on this first kilometer split because our timing mat had to be moved just slightly by about 10 Ooh. meters because of the conditions out on the course. You see that populating now with Nolan McGinn in that lead position. Bariola, Bell was mentioned. Ruiz in fourth. Latham, Valio, Manticone, Miami Havana's got a good start to their battle for the team race right now with Carroll as those are real times. Wow. And look at that. <laughs> Splash into the lower portion of that fairway so yes we're going to have some interesting uh, points on this course where conditions are a bit less than what you would expect 
and around that turn, we saw some runners actually falling. So uh, uh, conditions are really going to play a role. A couple of interesting uh, through lines here. Nathan Neal, who we expected to be at the front, he and Grievous are actually running together. Two of the top three finishers from last year running together. Another name we didn't talk about, Jojo Jordan, up there in the front, as is Joe Barrett, obviously recovered from his cold. And Manny Perez from California, he's right there in the mix as well. Noah Valio, the South winner, is in, uh, or Southeast winner, pardon me, is in sixth place. Um, a little bit further back, though, to Danny Simmons. Still McGinn there, along with Barriola. And then Bib 204 is Austin Westfall out of the Southwest region. It was 13th at his regional a year or so ago. But, you know, it's almost like McGinn has tried to control the pace here a little bit and keep everyone. Now there's some discussions going on and a little bit of fist bump here as they kind of work their way through this second kilometer. Very interesting the way the race has unfolded. And I'll tell you what, American Fork is probably going to have to make some pretty big moves. They're currently in 16th place. They're, t they're leading performer right now, 69th place with Danny Simmons. So they're going to have to move up if we're going to see someone from Utah win the title, Harriman in much better position, Paul. 15, 24, 32, 38, 59. A lot of racing to go, but as we've seen, Sean, on this course, moving up is not going to be the easiest thing in the world. No, you know, once you, the first start, you know, this straight away to the start is going to be the widest point of the race, but there is pretty packed up, and you're going to have to be using a lot of energy to try and navigate, especially if your top runner is back in the 60s. So that was definitely shocking to see at the, at the first split, but... Hopefully now they can start to try and navigate. But if you look back at the pack, I mean, they have a lot of runners to work through. So not probably the first K they were hoping to have. Um, but, you know, from NCAA cross country experience, you know, there is time, but they just are going to have to stay composed and, and work together. Tom, look at all these California singlets up here now near the front. Josh Bell, Eli Fitch and Young among them as they kind of control the pace here. We get to the 2K split of this five kilometer championship race. You see Cohen there also out of California. So California one, two and three on the individual side. Then Jimmy Wishusen, Jason Para makes it for the top five out of California. And Nolan McGinn, who was our early leader, still in the mix here as we work our way from kilometer two to kilometer three. And also moving up Jojo Jordan into seventh and Josiah Tostenson, who had that awful race at NXR in 10th. Adam Burles in the 4.03 miler in 14th. By the way, Paul, these three California kids, they all raced against each other in the same division last week. Cohen lost by just a half a second in that race, so he's going to be hungry to move up as well. Pretty exciting, uh, although I don't expect the California kids to hang on. Also see that real-time updating of the team score in the upper left corner of your screen. Carroll with the lead after two kilometers. Again, five runners scored by virtue of their placings. And they have that lead of 71 points over Harriman, which has moved up in the standings. Lincroft, Miami, Havana, and Downers North now constitute the top five. So four of the top five teams in the country are in the top four. American Fork starting to make their way up now. They moved up eight spots in that last K. They're now in eighth, but still, I would have to say they're in trouble. And where is Danny Simmons? That's the big question. Danny Simmons back in 71st position after 2K, coming through 10 seconds off the lead now. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know. Maybe he slipped. Maybe he just didn't get out quite as fast as he would like. I mean, 10 seconds does not sound too far back to make up over the next two and a half K. It's just, is it, how hard is it to navigate through, you know, 70 bodies? And you're also delayed reacting to moves, as we can see now, you know, it's starting to stretch out a little more. We um, can't tell exactly who's pushing, but you know, as they come back through the start line, they're, they're starting to spread things out a little. Looks like Bib 200, Tom, that would be Jojo Jordan. Not a surprise. He wasn't in the list of the people that we had, but he is a very, very experienced runner. He was second to Sims at NXR Southwest. He won the Utah 5A championships. He also won Bob Furman 
where he's ran against many of the people that are in this pack behind him. He's a 155, 55, 800 guy and a 846 two miler. So this is no fluke that he's out there in front and maybe he's been peaking for this race. He's got the experience. Pitching Young out of California up alongside him as well as you can see from our drone high above. You can also see the course tracker where they're out on that course coming up on the second mile complete of a little over three miles of racing. Again, 5,000 meters for the distance for both the boys and the girls. And now you start to see the 3K splits come through. Yeah, Paul, and, and it's, a, it's a slow race. Uh, one thing we better take note of, Aiden Bandequala, who's in that kind of that second pack, he's the kid that runs 49 for 400 meters. And right now he's in sixth. He is the fourth leading returnee from last year. I'll be curious if he starts to move up. He went up 53 spots in that last kilometer. So keep an eye on him. But it's still California 1-2, uh, Pada and Bell, and then Sam Scott, Dylan Nolly, who's a legit runner himself, but Bandaquala there in six, you have to keep an eye out for him for sure. But you know what? This leaderboard is not kind of what we expected outside really of Bandaquala and JoJo Jordan. Yeah, note on our real-time results, and that's one of the challenges with all these runners coming across the timing mats. It did say Para in the lead, but that is Jordan, bib number 200 in that clear southwest vest that is in the lead. So we'll use that as our... Uh, our official leaderboard here, which is the live pictures coming from the course, but things starting to get interesting here as they move into the back half of the race. Paul, Manny Poots is moving up. That's Manny Poots in second, who had that thrilling finish falling just on the other side. The kid from Wisconsin, he's got a lot of moxie and he's hanging right up there in second behind Jordan. Landon Hemeyer, the tall figure, bib 182, also up in the mix as well. Second at the Idaho Championships, trying to get a go of it now into that, what, top four, top five. Sean, back half of the race now, what are you thinking as you see this race unfold? Well, if you're in the lead, you definitely have some adrenaline right now. And maybe, you know, you didn't expect to be here, but if you're feeling good and you're pushing from the front, that can always um, give you a lot of confidence. And you can see that the course is a little more torn up as they run through some of the sections for the second time. So. You know, you, now you know how to navigate and, you know, benefit of being up front is you can take the tangents, you can hug the curves. I mean, he's starting to get a little bit of a gap. And if no one wants to respond and you can take advantage of these hills and tighter turns, I think, you know, you can find fractions of a second. But you're really just going to want to be careful around these turns not to fall. Yeah, JoJo Jordan does have some separation, Sean. I fully agree. And you can see slipping there coming around that turn. Some are even using the... Uh, the, uh, whatever you, the barriers there to kind of keep their uh, position. But that's what happens on these tight hairpin turns when it's that slick. You almost like need that as a grounding mm -hmm. force to make that turn. But this, these types of conditions for this, for JoJo Jordan, this is nothing. And look at how he goes through that water. He isn't bothered. Nothing's bothering him out here. He looks good. And, and to be honest with you, this is probably going to be a 1530 or so finish. Sean so we've got about three minutes left to go in this race and he doesn't look like he's in any distress at this point yeah just past the four kilometer mark so 1k to go you can see that lollipop portion of the course that brings them back and around and they already see that finish line and still got a ways to go there's the real time splits at four kilometers the lead up to two seconds but look at that talent behind him chasing him down and Byron Grievous yes. is out there lurking 3.3 seconds back. And he was one that we thought would factor into the final stages of this race. But he's got to make a move soon. He does. And by the way, Danny Simmons has moved up quite a bit. He's now in 21st. So that's going to help American Forks cause. Uh, but now we're going to see just what the heart of these young athletes can bring to bear here. And who is going to have. There's going to be some fast finishers in this race. And Simmons could be one of them. He knows he's not just running for himself, but his team. A lot of wind out there, Paul. And there you just saw Simmons come through, and he's really trying to go to the arms and the legs here to try to close in the gap. He's also thinking about that team race as well. And look in real time, American Fork now moving back up into second in that battle now that is all Utah at the top. Exactly. There is probably going to be a Utah team that finally wins NXN, and Carol and Lincroft also running very, very well. The top four teams in the country are in the top four of this race.
And with Simmons, this is what you're talking about. We saw this at NCAAs with Caitlin Tui. It is not the individual day he was hoping for. It was not the individual day Caitlin Tui was hoping for. But how can you battle for your team? They're in second now, but if he can keep moving up, he gives them a chance to compete for that win. I'm going to be moving right there. Closing stretches now of the 2023 Nike Cross Nationals Championship. JoJo Jordan having moved out ahead of such a talented and deep field of national class high school runners now closing in on that fateful hill that we've seen test all of the runners over so many years here at Glendevere Golf Course. Can he get over the top of it and still hold off the chasers behind? Paul, just about a minute to go in this race. He doesn't have to hang on for much longer, but this is where you are tested severely at this point in the course. He gets through this point in the course, his speed is gonna take him through. He looks good powering up this last hill. I mean, it's always, oh, it's that's brutal to take your momentum, but if he can find it again, one look back, but the gap looks, ooh, it's closing. Not only do you have to crest that first hill, but you gotta get over the second one. Now we see it straight on. JoJo Jordan keeps looking behind him as he's getting Cameron Todd's best effort here in the closing stretches. Everybody else trying to get to the finish line, but it would appear that JoJo Jordan with one final look, the smile emerges, the celebration begins. He is the Nike Cross Nationals champion. Paul, what a finish by Nathan Neal. He came from nowhere, moved up nine spots. He was one of our top three returnees. And Cameron Todd, another brilliant finish. Danny Simmons coming in as well. And already carnage on the race course. I think that was Grievous who went down very hard in the last stretch of that race, trying to hold on for the best position he could have. Now keep an eye, those parentheses upstairs on that graphic show you how many runners from the respective teams have got across the finish line. Your first five are your scores, and this is also real-time scoring. So once that first five is across the line, that may not be the final result here. So a lot can happen right now in that battle, which looks like it's going to be a redo of that Utah State Championship. Look at Harriman and American Fort go back and forth on that board in real time. Yeah, and it helps. Harriman, of course, lost twice to American Fork. So they had a bullseye on American Fork today. Harriman has that great packed group of runners. Danny Simmons helped the cause of American Fork by picking off eight runners in that last kilo. It'll be very interesting to see when the uh, dust settles how this is all going to play out. And, and even if they don't come out with the win, I'm very impressed that American Fork was able to move up from 16th all the way to potentially second. I mean, when we saw that first kilometer split, I didn't know. I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed because they had to navigate a lot of runners, a very, you know, we saw the, how runners were slipping and sliding everywhere. It was a sloppy course, and, and that shows a lot of composure. And I know they might not have accomplished their biggest goal, but hopefully they can still be proud of how they ran because that was very impressive. And we got a lot of talent that's been here before at the top of that list, but I also know, Tom, again, unofficial scores right now. Two first-time appearances by Miami, Havana, and Niwot, and for the moment, they're in the top five. Yeah, and, and Paul, I think this is pretty solidified. 188 runners have now crossed the finish line. We can call this for Harriman. Congratulations to them. The first Utah champions lost twice to American Fork this year, packed them in, and did a great job. And they were the best team from last year to come back for another go. So that idea that that experience and that motivation was going to help push them forward. And now it appears that they will be crowned Nike Cross Nationals champions here with 83 points, still unofficial. American Fort second with 100 points. Carroll and then Miami Havana. Niwot in fifth. And then rounding out the top 10 on the team side, Lincroft out of the Northeast, Downers North of the Midwest, San Clemente of California, Riverton of the Southwest, and Dana Point of California. Jack Beckstrom is the star for Harriman today. He moved up 15 spots in the last kilo. He's one of the more unheralded runners. And then when you throw in Jonah Tong, who finished 34th, you don't, I was saying low sticks help here, but Harriman didn't win it with low sticks. They won it with packing in the right spot. It was actually interesting looking at some of the history of NXN. It's really come down to the third, fourth, and fifth runners historically. 
Um, I think Carroll, maybe, I think they won one year with a, a strong duo of one point and six points uh, for their first two runners. But, you know, at NXN, it, it's it's all about depth. Um, the low stick helps, and but it's really what is your entire team doing, and that's all about fighting for each other on that day. And, you know, two Utah teams in the top two um, after never having a champion, I mean, that's pretty fantastic for that state as a whole. So the final racers getting across the line, all finishing on empty here. Congratulations to all of those athletes for finishing off a great championship season as the boys' championship race is over. Fitting that a Nike Cross National Champion would have the last name of Jordan. It seems uh, so appropriate here as uh, JoJo Jordan took to the lead in the later stages of the race, holds off a late surging Cameron Todd and Nathan Neal. Those are your top three. Let's go to the finish line to hear from our champion, J.J. Jordan of the Southwest. Hi, what's up, guys? Welcome to the finish line. Uh, I'm Grant Fisher. I'm here with the second place finisher, uh, Cameron Todd. Uh, fantastic race out there. I'm sure everyone wants to know, how was the puddle? Man, that was fun. Can't, much for, can't ask for much better of a cross-country race than that. Uh, you know, we're just having fun in the mud, what can I say? Yeah, and you came out, you know, coming up that final hill, you had a lot of momentum, um, you know, running down JoJo a little bit at the end. Left yourself a little distance to go. Was there a moment you thought you had the win? Uh, or, you know, were you just trying to build as much as you could in that final stretch? Uh, I knew I had potential to take the victory until I got to the, uh, the top of the hill, and I was just thinking back to last year of how much change happened in that hill, and I was wondering if I attack it hard enough if I can have a similar swinging position again, but uh, it didn't work out like that, but you know what, I'm so happy with how I race. Dude, you ran a great race. Uh, you're a Midwest kid, so you know the mud, the cold, it doesn't phase you, so fantastic job out there. Uh, congratulations. Right, thank you very much, yeah, appreciate man. it. Great job, yeah. Our thanks to Grant Fisher there with the interview with Cameron Todd. So hopefully we'll uh, have a chance during this award ceremony coming up shortly, Tom and Sean, to hear from JoJo Jordan. Todd, in that great battle with Nathan Neal. And, you know, again, all-American status for all these top finishers and a lot to be excited about. And, you know, this race definitely wasn't the race we sort of expected. The main protagonists didn't really factor in as much as we thought they would. No, no. Uh that is true, although Nathan Neal and Cameron Todd, we had them set up uh, as among the top five guys. But, you know, the weather makes cowards of us all. You know, it's hard to, if you don't know how to run in these conditions and run in these conditions well, the other two guys, Grievous 11th, Simmons in 13th, that's not terrible, but certainly not what we would expect from these guys. One other thought. So Giorgio Jordan wins the individual title as a Utah guy. And Utah wins as a team. And I think, Paul, there's a very good chance that we may get a Utah girls champion on the team side as well. Of course, we're going to talk more about that later. But um, that was about as exciting a race as you can get, considering all the machinations that were going on. Oh, and Jordan, I mean, he held his composure well. I think we saw right around the halfway mark he'd made his point, um, you know, up into the front. And sometimes, you know, he, I think he made a move, and then it seemed like the group closed it but then he held his gap strong over those last two hills and I mean second and third place were closing very strong but you could see the smile on his face the last 50 meters he knew he had it and that is a very special feeling so we're going to go back down to the finish line again Grant Fisher doing great work for us at the regional events and now here at NXN as he has another interview What's up, everybody? We're back at the finish line. I'm with the champion here, JoJo Jordan. Uh, fantastic race out there. Dude, you crushed it. You made a really strong move. How were you feeling right before you made that move, and what was going through your head once you had a little little daylight behind you? Yeah, I knew where 2.5K was, and I felt good, and I told myself, I'm going to make a move. I have, this is my senior year. I've got nothing to lose. Here I am at NXN, and I'm just here to have some fun. And I made it, and I didn't look back. And I was really proud of my performance. Yeah, dude, you did a great job. and. Uh, was there, there ever a point where you knew you had it in the bag or just all the way to the finish line? There were guys charging behind you, but you held them off strong. 
Uh, any fear out there, any glances back, or you were just tunnel vision? Yeah, my first look back was coming up that last hill, and I saw those two boys just powering it up, powering up it, and I was like, I gotta move. These boys can definitely catch me. They can close hard, and took one last look back, like halfway through the final stretch, and I, I, I knew I had it. I did uh, put the number one up, and we came through the line. Yeah, man, that's the way to do it. You know, no better feeling than you know stepping across that line in first place. Uh, really proud of the way you raced. That was a strong, confident run. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much, Grant. As we're getting set here shortly for the award.